My name's Dan Deacon, and I, I guess I write music and perform it. Tonight's show at the Natural History Museum is going to be my first open to the public solo show in a long time. I've been playing a lot of uh, shows with my band or ensemble, however you want to call it. So this will be the first solo show. It's kind of more in line with what I came up doing and got known for doing, where these solo on the floor, sort of immersive, loud, sort of sets. <laughs> Right now. My setups kind of remain the same. Like I, I like to think of it as one instrument, or I guess two instruments. One is the effects chain, which is pitch shift into phase modulation into delay. And I've got an oscillator that I also run through that. My voice runs through it. And the oscillator is more for like solos or noise elements, and the voice is for beautiful singing. And then I've got a keyboard, which goes into a vocoder, and then the backing tracks, which are now on a computer that are also triggering the lights. I like thinking of the smartphone as an object that can be used as a light or a speaker. Only one person uses a phone at a time. I mean, you can be using social media or whatever, but it's really only one individual is interacting with the device, where a speaker and a light are shared experiences, like the, the sound travels throughout the space, the light travels throughout the space. When you think about phones in that capacity of being these very intelligent lighting devices and very intelligent speakers that you can control wirelessly, I think it opens up a great realm of possibility where you can create these spatial environments of sound and light that have never existed before because people weren't walking around with wireless smart lights and speakers. Well, the way our app works is it kind of works in a similar way to like old modems used to work, where that beautiful <laughs> encoded data, and then the modem would take that sound and then translate it into data and know how to turn that into text and images or other sounds. And our app does the same thing. It synchronizes all of the phones in the room and turns them into one programmable mass of phones and lights and speakers. So you can create different patterns of light and spectrums of light and, well, not spectrums of light, we're creating spectrums of light, would be radiating everybody. Um, but just to create a lighting show in the middle of the audience, rather than being the lighting show, you know, focused on the band or coming from one point, it's coming from all surrounding points and we can control it um, the same way you could control any light or any speaker. Well, I mean, there's no way we're gonna stop people from bringing this technology into the concert hall or into the venue or into the bar. Like, people are always gonna have their phones for now until the apocalypse, like people will be on their phones. So if you, and I feel like a lot of new technology that emerges, people just try to shove as much old technology into it as possible. Like, it can be a calculator, it can be an alarm clock, it can be a flashlight. But like, what are the new things that you can turn it into that didn't exist prior? Like, what does this device have the capability to do that you couldn't do with a TV, or you couldn't do with a phone, or that you couldn't do with a computer? Do you know what I mean? So that's the way I like to think about it, and I think it's gonna, in the coming years, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of a revolution in what the smartphone can really do in regards to groups and crowd sync. I think it's going to be an important sort of element of what people are going to do with phones. It was made with me and four other friends, the main programmer being Keith Lee, and we started looking into it and it seemed like there were a lot of other corporate interests that were going down a similar path. And we just thought keeping it you know, this app made by artists for live performance would be a good thing to branch out and have be something that could exist on all levels. We talked about making it open source and I still think we have aspirations to do that, but we just want to make sure that the technology doesn't get co-opted by like, you know, the Gargamel of corporations before we can really fully develop it and it gets locked down. We don't want any Smurfs on. Being fellow Smurfs, we don't want to get turned into gold.